Greetings, Earthlings, and welcome back to Podcastage. What you're listening to right now is the USB output of a $60 XLR and USB dynamic microphone, and now what you're listening to is the XLR output. That microphone is the Tonor TD510, as I mentioned, $60. All of the recording settings will be linked in the description as well as the doobly-doo. And now let's talk about what comes in the box. Is that what I do next? Of course you are going to get the microphone. You will get a 6-foot XLR to XLR cable, which doesn't feel great. You'll get a 6-foot USB-C to USB-A cable, which feels fine. And a little bit of documentation. Then as far as the build quality, I am shocked to say, but this thing feels pretty good. It has an all-metal body which feels very robust, a metal mesh grill with no give to it, the mounting arm is also metal, the tension screw is also metal, the mount has 5 8 and 3 8 inch threading. On the top, you have a microphone mute button, which functions as a selector switch as well. You have a volume up and down button to adjust the level of the headphones or the microphone's gain. On the rear of the mic, you have the analog XLR output. You have the USB-C port to connect this to your device. You have a 3.5mm headphone jack, which does offer zero latency monitoring. And if it matters to you, this mic is made in China. I will also have the very limited specs that we have up on screen and in the description in case you care about them and you want to read a little bit more. Now I am spinning around the TD510 to 90 degrees to show you the off-axis rejection and coloration. Continuing around to 180 degrees, this is the rear of the mic. Continuing around to the second 90 degree angle, here we are. And then rotating and ending at the front of the microphone. Now I want to see how effective the microphone is at rejecting plosives with the included windscreen. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Now I am right on top of the microphone to exaggerate the proximity effect and I am whispering so I don't clip and here is how it's sounding. Creepy. Now I'm about three inches off of the mic with it pointed at the corner of my mouth and here is how it's sounding. Now I'm about one foot away from the microphone, about two feet away from the microphone, and about four feet away from the Tonor TD510. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Gatoron blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for the gaming folk, now I am typing on the sad W and spacebar keys. Now here is how the microphone sounds in a well-treated room when I'm about 4 inches away from the microphone. And now here is how the microphone sounds about 4 inches away from my mouth in a completely untreated room. Now I want to see how effective the microphone is at rejecting shocks, so I'll start by tapping on my desk to see how much of that it rejects. And then I will tap on the boom arm. Next, because I'm incredibly annoying, I am going to tap on the body of the microphone to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. Next, I want to see how much of an impact the provided foam windscreen has on the tone of the recording. So right now, I'm about 4 inches off without the foam installed, and here is how it sounds. And now, here is how the microphone sounds in the exact same position with the provided foam windscreen. And for good measure, here is a second sample speaking into the microphone without the provided foam installed on the mic. And for good measure, here is another sample of the microphone with the provided foam on it. Next, I want to see if there is any kind of audible sound when I mute or unmute the microphone. Now I want to demonstrate the difference in tone between the USB output and the XLR output. The USB output is running directly into my Mac, 24-bit, 48 kilohertz, gain is set at 100%, and the level is set at 100%. The XLR is running into the Focusrite 18i 22nd gen, gain is set at around 415 or 430, 24-bit, 48 kilohertz. 
I will have been switching back and forth the entire time I'm explaining this, and that should give you plenty of time to understand the difference in sound that you're getting between the two outputs. Next, like I always do, I'm going to do a quick spoken word comparison between the microphone that we're reviewing and a handful of other microphones that are available so we can hear how it stacks up against the competition and hear the microphone outside of an isolated vacuum. Starting on the Tonor TD510, 3 inches off, gain at 100%, 24-bit, 48kHz, and here's how it sounds. Starting on the Behringer XM8500, this is a $25 XLR-only dynamic microphone. If you include an affordable interface, this will be about the same price as the Tonor. I am 3 inches off, running into the 18i 22nd Gen, gain set at around 430, 24-bit, 48 kilohertz, and here is how it compares to the USB microphone. Back again on the TD510 for a palette cleanser, here is how it's sounding, let's go to the next one. Next, I am on the Meono HD300T, a $65 XLR and USB dynamic mic, 3 inches off, 16-bit, 48 kilohertz, level set at 89%, and here is how this compares to the toner. Let's do more. Back for a third palate cleanser, so clear out your ear canals. Here is how this sounds. Let's go to another microphone. Now I am on the Samson Q2U, which is a $60 to $70 XLR and USB dynamic mic, 3 inches off, level set at 55%, 16-bit, 48 kilohertz, and here is how this compares to a microphone that is kind of the same price. Let's go back to the toner. Here I am back on the Tonor again, so you can hear how this sounds before we jump to another microphone, which we will do right. Now I am on the Fifine K688. I am 3 inches off, 16-bit, 48 kilohertz, level set at 59%. This goes for $75 XLR and USB dynamic mic. There you go. That's how it compares toward the Toner to the Toner. Let's do more. All right, we just surpassed the midpoint of the comparisons. This is the Tonor TD510 again. Here is how it sounds. Let's do another one. Next, I am on the Audio-Technica ATR2100X-USB, an $80 XLR and USB dynamic mic, 3 inches off, 24-bit, 48 kilohertz, with my level set at 62%. And this is how this compares to a microphone that is $20 less expensive. Let's go back and do more. I say that every time. Hey, we're back on the Tonor so you can hear how this sounds before we jump to another comparison. Now I am on the Audio-Technica AT2040 USB, which is a $150 USB dynamic mic, 3 inches off. 24-bit, 48 kilohertz, with my level set at 41%, and here is how it compares to the toner. We got a couple more to go. If you haven't already, make sure to check the lower third to see how much I boost each of these in post, but here is the toner to clear out your ear holes. Y yep. Now I am on the Shure SM7B, which is a $400 XLR-only dynamic microphone, 3 inches off, running into the 18i 22nd gen, gain at 100%, and here is how this compares to the Tonor. I am doing this because this is a very popular microphone, and I want to give you a point of comparison. I think I missed the whole penultimate microphone thing, so this is the final palate cleanser. Let's go to the last mic. I just can't help but smile when I hear myself on this microphone. It sounds so good. Now I am on the Neumann, hello Neumann, U87AI. This is a $3,700 XLR multi-pattern studio condenser microphone. Cardioid polar pattern, no pad, no filter, 18i20, gain set at 11. This is just a control from video to video. You know how I sound on this. That is it. Not a fair comparison. Let's go to the music test now.
Would it be too much if I asked If that subscribe button you'd smash I wouldn't mind If you also chose to smash the like yeah, go ahead and smash that. I can't bring myself to do it. If you want more, there's a subscribe button. If you got any value, there's a like button. Let's go. That's as good as it's going to get. Let's go to the conclusion. I never quite know how to start a negative review, so I'll just start by saying... This microphone makes me sad. <laughs> but first up, as far as pros, the microphone is relatively affordable. It has a physical mute button. It has both XLR and USB outputs. It records at up to 24 bit and 96 kilohertz. Only outputs up to 48 kilohertz though. And it has a USB-C connection, which I know a lot of people will absolutely love. Then as far as cons, number one for me is the USB output. The polarity of that output is flipped and that led to the audio sounding unusable and bordering on painful. The only way to resolve that is to invert the phase in post and that is just unacceptable. Secondly, the XLR and the USB output sound drastically different, and according to their site, what I was likely hearing on the XLR output was an enhanced sense of audio space. Whatever that means. <laughs> I also found the microphone to be pretty bad with plosives. It didn't do a good job at shock rejection. The headphone amp is ungodly noisy if you monitor yourself at all. And the tension screw on this thing comes loose quite a bit, so you really need to tighten that thing down to keep your microphone from flopping about. And now what are my overall thoughts and opinions of the TD-510? I found it quite difficult to assess the sound of this because the XLR and the USB sounded so different, and the USB had the polarity inverted, and that led to the audio being terrible, and it sounds like the mids are canceling each other out. So if you have this microphone and you have that same kind of sound out of the USB output, try inverting your phase. But as far as the overall sound, if I can generalize, low mids. All the low mids. Ribbon mics have nothing on this thing. Between 100 and 200 hertz, it is so incredibly overbearing. I had to do a 5 to 6 dB cut around 150 hertz to get it to sound normal. Then the upper mids, they don't sound terrible. And once we clear out those low mids, this thing has a bit of a crispy top end to it. For all of the music, I used the XLR output, and on the electric guitar, it wasn't the worst thing that I have ever heard, but you were getting so much low mids that you're going to have to do a lot of EQ work. On the acoustic guitar, exact same story, all of the low mids, but then the crispiness in the top end picks up a bit of the attack on the strings, in case you're looking for that kind of sound. For singing vocals, I think it sounds kind of throaty, for lack of a better word. It sounds as though I was singing strictly out of my throat, and I thought that sounded terrible. And for spoken word on both XLR and USB, it is just too muddy. Compared to every microphone in the Versus section of this video, those all sound thin compared to this thing. Just way too much in the bass and low mids. And to wrap up, would I recommend the Tonor TD-510? It is very rare that I come right out and say this, but no, I would not recommend this microphone. And it is not just because of the polarity issue that I had on the USB output, which I do find unacceptable. It is also that I find the microphone so incredibly muddy on the USB and the XLR output. Yes, you can clean up a lot of the low mid issues by EQing it, but this microphone is geared towards beginners. And because I think the sound is so bad right out of the box, I can't in good conscience recommend this thing when there are so many better sounding options out there at the same price or lower. XM8500 UM2, better. Q2U, better. Mayono 300T, better. ATR2100X-USB, better. All sound better right out of the box. So for a beginner, no. And if you're a professional, why? N no, <laughs> no. 
that is all that I have. If you found this fun, interesting, or helpful, thumbs up, hated it, big ol' thumbs down. If you liked this video, thank the members. They're the ones who advocated that I actually do this, so <laughs> curse them or thank them, whatever you deem fit. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I will talk to you later. Bye-bye. Whoa. Whoa. Boop.